now for today. We've got a lot going on across the country. We've been tracking those thunderstorms across the Midwest. But as you said, it's the peak of hurricane season. You can see them lined up out here over the eastern Atlantic. And there, by the way, is Jose. I want to get go away Jose trending on social <laughs> media. That's the last thing we need right now. I know. We are still recovering from Irma for sure. And we could see a few showers and thunderstorms in northern Florida today and southern parts of Georgia where still a couple people without power there. Otherwise, it's the heat and humidity. We've mm -hmm. got that here, too, in the plains where we could see some heavy downpours, possible severe weather from Minneapolis all the way down into parts of Nebraska, Kansas City, watching you guys very closely later on this afternoon. Yeah, and tonight as well. Yeah, not as many people going to the coastline this time of year now that we're past Labor Day weekend, but you still get those really good deals this time of the year. And if you are trying to sneak away to the coastline, as Jackie just talked about, the, the surf is going to be very dangerous. The rip currents, they're going to be very dangerous as well, running very high all along the East Coast. And if you're just waking up this morning and joining us and you see that your town on Long Island or maybe Boston, Cape Cod, you are in the path of Jose. Uh, fear not, we are con you know, continuously looking at the computer models, although this is a little bit uncomfortably close for so many, and there will be the indirect impacts regardless of the center of the circulation of Jose. So we've got the heavy rain, the strong wind that's a possibility, the dangerous rip currents, large wave action, and unfortunately those waves could take a toll on those beautiful beaches from Cape Cod right on down toward the outer banks of North Carolina as well. If it takes more of an easterly track, again, less of an impact in terms of the rainfall, but still coastal breezy showers, the rip currents, the waves, and the beach erosion are still all impacts in play. So here is a look at our forecast models and what they are going to be doing, uh, as you can see here, taking most of it offshore. That's the center of Jose. Keep in mind, we've got those hurricane force winds that extend out about 35 miles and also those tropical storm winds that extend out even beyond that 145 miles or so. So the computer models take the center offshore, but we still have you on the western edge of that path because we want everybody to be prepared for this. Basically, just in case. I mean, we've got to look at Jose and basically those big waves, the strong winds are going to be interacting with the coastline, especially again, the core of the worst winds keeping it offshore. But still, there will be some impacts right along the New England coastline down toward the mid-Atlantic as well. And here are the waves emanating out from the center of Jose, getting very close here to Long Island as well as Cape Cod. So this still bears watching as we get beyond the weekend, Jackie, and into early mm -hmm. next week. Yeah, more. All right, well, hopefully we're not going to see those kinds of images out of the Northeast with Jose, but the track is getting a little bit closer to the New England coastline, and there will be some indirect impacts from Jose as well as we get into next week. But for today, it's that patchy, dense fog that you are dealing with. It's pretty thick in some parts of Maine, back toward the Berkshires as well. Take a look at some of the visibility that we're seeing here, about a quarter mile in Montpelier, Vermont, right now over towards Portland, Maine, down to about a half mile. So where the, use those low beam headlights as you get out and about. Scranton, about six miles, Syracuse, seven. It's a little bit thicker down towards Groton, Connecticut. So the water vapor imagery basically showing that dry air above the fog. So we're actually looking at a pretty decent day for most of you. Can't rule out a few showers along the 95 corridor, but upstate New York, Finger Lakes region, up through the Adirondacks, gorgeous weather for that hike. 74 degrees in Boston, 85 in Philly. And here is a look at our forecast where the Yankees are at home in the Bronx. It looks like we keep the raindrops away for most of the day. You can see a few specks of green starting to show up, though, as we head into the early afternoon hours, but ever, whatever rain we do get, it's going to be fairly light and widely scattered across the Northeast. Uh, for tomorrow, we bring it down towards parts of Pennsylvania, but keeping the 95 corridor dry for any football games going on out there. Looking good, looking gorgeous, actually, as we're, uh, you know, just getting ready for Jose, just in case some of those preps being made as we get into the day tomorrow, 83 Burlington and 82 degrees. Before reaching Florida and knocking out power for millions, Hurricane Irma's devastation ripped across the Caribbean. St. Martin took a direct hit from Irma's Category 5 winds, sparking a desperate situation on the island for thousands of people. Meteorologist Mark Elliott spoke with one survivor about trying to get off the island after.